Do you ever take a few minutes on Sunday and meticulously time block your calendar? Then Friday rolls around and you find that you've only accomplished a fraction of what you perfectly planned out for your week. Well, you might have fallen victim to the planning fallacy. Today we're going to talk about what it is, three potential explanations for it, and how you could avoid it when you plan your week. But first, hi, my name is Jay. I'm a psychologist and full-time behavioral research scientist, also a planner lover and content creator here on YouTube. And here on this channel, we focus on developing flexible life systems so that you can design your life like a behavioral scientist. So what in the world is the planning fallacy? The planning fallacy is a cognitive bias, so it's a glitch in the way that we think about things. And in general, it refers to the way that people tend to underestimate the amount of time it's going to take to complete a specific task. What's especially interesting about this fallacy is that people tend to hold on to this belief even though they know full well or have past evidence that it has taken them longer to do these tasks in the past. This phenomenon was first expressed in a paper by two psychologists in 1979 and has since been studied in a wide variety of contexts. The science on this is quite fascinating and pretty extensive, so I'm just going to review a few reasons why psychologists think this happens. First, we as humans tend to generally overestimate our performance compared to other people. We are particularly bad at judging our own efforts and consistently believe we will outperform others and definitely not perform as the average person does. Secondly, even when we know how we've performed in the past, we tend tend to attribute our shortcomings to external situational factors rather than internal stable factors. This is more generally known as the self-serving cognitive bias. So it took me a really long time to finish the report because my computer wasn't working and the internet was slow and definitely not because I lacked an organization system to quickly pull up the information that I needed or definitely not because I lacked a template for my report. It was all these external factors rather than internal factors. And lastly, there could be personal or organizational reasons why we prefer a more optimistic timeline. So if a person presents their boss with a project timeline that's three months long with a $100,000 budget, and then a second person presents the boss with an estimate that's like five months long with a $120,000 budget. Which proposal do you think the boss will favor? Which one do you favor? What if I told you the average amount of time it takes people in a similar company to do a similar project was five months and $120,000? Do you think the decision makers are more likely to support this data-driven second proposal? Or do you think the decision makers will be more impressed with someone who purports to be above average? Because after all, I'm not an average employee and you are not an average company. Which one would you pick if you were the boss? This one or this one? This one or this one? With all that being said, let's dive into my work planning strategy. When I start to schedule my work week, I consider three things. First, where does this task or where do the tasks that I need to accomplish fall in the categories of importance and urgency? And I've done many videos on this. I will link some of the videos in the description box up above and down below. This helps me decide if I should be doing this task this week or not. Then I look at whether it's a low, moderate, or high energy task, and this helps me to decide when I'm going to be scheduling the task. I also have some videos on that that I'll link below. Today I'm going to be focusing on this third domain that I consider when I'm planning out my week. How long is this going to take? This is going to determine the block of time that I dedicate to completing this task. And that is when I use my knowledge of the planning fallacy to my advantage by leaning on my time blocking system. I'm going to give you three ways to avoid the planning fallacy when you are setting up your time blocking system. An easy, a moderate, and an advanced technique. An easy way to address the planning fallacy is to use a multiplier when you're planning for your time blocks. If something is easy, I tend to use a 50% multiplier. A 2004 study from the University of Illinois found that people underestimate the amount of time it's going to take to do even common tasks like getting ready to go out by as much as 56%. So if I think it'll take me about an hour to check my email, I schedule a 90 minute time block. When things are very difficult or more complex, I use a 100% multiplier. So if I think it's going to take me four hours to write a blog post, I block eight hours of time in my schedule to write that blog post. 
You could also use our general tendency to overestimate our performance compared to others to your advantage. You can ask yourself how long it will take a coworker to accomplish that task and then block out that amount of time in your calendar. Another way of combating the planning fallacy is to segment or break your task down into its smaller subcomponents and plan out how much time you think it'll take for each of those individual events. A 2008 study published in the peer-reviewed journal Memory and Cognition found that people generally estimate longer task times when the task is broken up into its component subtasks and then added up compared to when they're asked to estimate how long it's going to take to complete the task as a whole. Therefore, time blocking smaller subtasks could get you a little bit closer to a true estimate of how long it's going to take you to complete something. If you want to live life on hard mode, or if you are a data nerd like myself, you might want to use this advanced technique for scheduling your time blocks. You could go through a period of time where you are actually time tracking and seeing how long it realistically is taking you to complete a given task. The best predictor of how you'll behave in the future is how you've behaved in the past. And if you have extensive data on your own behavior and how long it takes you to accomplish certain things, you can use that information to more accurately time block. Although this information is less generalizable to the public, like a peer-reviewed journal is, it does give you some very specific information on yourself and is likely to more accurately reflect how long it takes you to finish these particular tasks. You can get real serious and calculate your mean and your own standard deviations and how long it takes you to do things. And I'm currently working on my own time tracking experiment and I'll be sharing my metrics with you on my channel over the next few weeks. If you found this video helpful or interesting, you might be interested in some of my other videos, including my current work organization system on Notion, or you may want to hit that circle to subscribe for more content.